Constant Wonder Kids is a Constant Wonder podcast. Hi, Wonder Kids. It's Paige. If you have a pet, you know that sometimes pets need to go to the doctor. An animal doctor is called a veterinarian or vet, and vets are able to help animals when they're sick or hurt. It might be easy to picture a veterinarian taking care of pets like dogs or cats, but can you imagine a vet that cares for wild animals in far-off places? Animals like gorillas, elephants, and hippos sometimes need help from animal doctors too. And for jobs like that, we need special veterinarians that are trained to take care of amazing wildlife. Today, we're going to hear from one of those special wildlife veterinarians, Dr. Gladys Kalema Zikusoka. Let me tell you, it's not the easiest job. For example, one of the first tasks Dr. Gladys was given as a wildlife veterinarian was to move two elephants. And of course, in vet school, you're not taught how to move elephants. How would you try to move two elephants? You certainly can't just pick them up. Luckily, Dr. Gladys had some other wildlife veterinarians there to help her learn the plan. To move an elephant, you have to shoot the elephant with a sleeping dart, then make sure he's on his side, then use a rope to pull him into a truck. After that, you give the elephant a different medicine so he wakes up. And then you run away so you're not squished. Phew, that sounds like a lot of work. And once he's standing up and his trunk is hanging out of the shipping container, then you know that he's fine and they'll make it to the other side without any problem. When one of the elephants was asleep, Dr. Gladys was told to take some blood from his ear to do a blood test to make sure that the elephant was healthy. I was able to draw blood because their ear veins are huge, because their ears are huge. So that was very confidence building for someone like me who's just fresh out of vet school. But what happens is the elephant, after 45 minutes, puts his head up. Oh no! The elephant woke up before she was ready. So luckily, the animal capture expert was on my elephant and he was able to hold the elephant's head down with a few other people and everybody was staring at me to do something about it. So I had to quickly look into the box and found the drug that would make the elephant sleep again and I put it into the ear vein and he went back to sleep again peacefully. And I was so relieved about that because if he had walked away in front of everyone, I'd be so embarrassed. Dr. Gladys and other wildlife experts were able to take the elephants to Queen Elizabeth National Park, where they were able to live happy and healthy. Darting and moving elephants is a pretty big adventure, but it's what Dr. Gladys is used to as a wildlife veterinarian. Even though Dr. Gladys mostly works with animals, she also has to work with people to teach them how to help animals. When Dr. Gladys was in high school, she always loved animals, so she started the wildlife club at her school. She brought a group of kids to a nearby national park, and they had a wonderful time seeing the animals. But the only sad thing about it was that there were no predators. There were no lions, no leopards. And they told me it's because of the heavy poaching in the area. The predators have been killed. Poaching is when animals are hunted illegally. So it meant that we could go on walking safaris without fear of being attacked by a lion or a leopard. But it made me feel like maybe I should become a wildlife vet to help to restore Uganda to its former glory. And I just felt that I could play a significant role in bringing this wildlife back by becoming not only a veterinarian, but a wildlife veterinarian. So that's what she did. Dr. Gladys studied hard to become a veterinarian and then moved home to Uganda to become a special wildlife vet. She did a lot to help animals, like darting the elephants we talked about earlier. But it was also Dr. Gladys's job to keep humans healthy in their interactions with animals. One problem she faced was an anthrax outbreak, which is a dangerous bacteria that can kill both humans and animals. Anthrax can be spread when humans hunt and eat animals that have the disease. So it was important that Dr. Gladys spread the word. We've had a couple of anthrax outbreaks in Queen Elizabeth National Park. And what happens is the hippos were always dying from Shambura Gorge, which has a river. And the hippos die, and then some people were eating those hippos because people like to eat hippos. You know, one hippo can feed a whole village. It's a huge animal. And people were picking up anthrax. And in the very first outbreak, we lost over 300 hippos. And over 200 people who ate them got sick 
and six people died from eating infected hippo meat. But then when another outbreak occurred six years later, we were able to lead the effort to stop people eating infected hippo meat. Dr. Gladys and other healthcare workers educated people about the dangers of eating meat from unknown sources. It worked. People didn't eat hippo meat, so hardly anyone got sick and no one died. Because Dr. Gladys taught people about the dangers of eating sick hippos, she was able to help whole communities, once again showing how human health and animal health are linked together. As Dr. Gladys continued working with humans and wildlife in Uganda, she focused on one animal in particular, the gorilla. The first time I saw a mountain gorilla, it was really amazing because I'd been wanting to see them for a number of years. It was a steep hike going up the hill. You normally, we had to go with a walking stick. But when, as we approached the gorillas, the ranger kind of said, they're here. And I could smell, smell something, a pungent smell, which was different, you know, like somebody with B.O. or something like that, <laughs> you know, body odor. <laughs> They're like, yeah, that's when we're right next to the gorillas now. So everyone has to put aside their walking sticks. You're not allowed to take water or anything to eat or drink. And so then we started approaching them and within five minutes, five to ten minutes, we had reached them. How would you feel going up to a gorilla? Excited? Nervous? Maybe both. I was a little bit nervous, but when I saw that he was relaxed and that rangers I was with were also relaxed, then I also relaxed. And I just couldn't believe that at five meters, he wasn't nervous at all. And he was just staring at us. So I, look, I looked into his eyes and I felt a very deep connection. Their eyes are so similar to us. So I feel like I'm staring into a species that is very connected to us. Um, I could see that we share over 98% genetic material because I really feel like we're recognizing each other very quickly. So it's, it's really amazing. I can see a huge resemblance when I stare in a gorilla's eyes. It's a very emotional experience. Gorillas are amazing animals, and Dr. Gladys was happy to be working with them in the Bwindi National Park. The Bwindi National Park is home to mountain gorillas, elephants, and monkeys, and is a special and unique place in Uganda. When I finally got a chance to go there, it was truly amazing. We drove for a very long time, 10 hours eventually, and when I got there, I felt like I'd reached the ends of the earth because we arrived in the evening and the mist was rising. It was very beautiful. But I did feel like I'd come to the ends of the earth. I'd never been to somewhere so remote. And I myself was put in a very remote mud hut on top of the hill, which freaked me out because I'd never stayed in a mud hut by myself. But after about two nights, I loved it. It was very nice. Bwindi wasn't always a national park. In fact, for a long time, people would cut down trees in Bwindi and hunt the animals there. While some people thought this was a good thing because then the humans had animals to eat and wood to build things, this hunting was hurting the animals and the environment. Then, without enough trees to filter out pollutants, there wasn't enough clean water and healthy land for the people to farm. Bwindi needed help. Once the head of the national parks realized that we have mountain gorillas, also in Bwindi Forest there's chimpanzees and forest elephants and over four species of monkeys. It's a very important place with many important species. He lobbied to the president to create a national park and a national park was created. And that meant that no one could cut trees anymore. And that meant that, you know, the forest stopped being destroyed and it could provide enough water for people and stabilize the climate. So it was very important that Windy becomes a national park so that people don't have to cut, people are not allowed to cut trees and the gorillas and other species can be protected. When Bwindi became a national park, some people in Uganda were upset that they couldn't cut down trees or hunt the animals in the forest anymore. But Dr. Gladys and other national park workers knew that once the forest was healthy, everyone would benefit. Soon, the farmers were able to grow food with the clean water and the healthy environment. In addition to farming, they were able to make money by doing something new, taking people to meet the gorillas. Visiting the mountain gorillas is something that a lot of people are willing to pay a lot of money for because it's such an incredibly amazing experience. It's a spiritual experience. And so 
that has enabled the mountain gorillas to survive and thrive and to people to coexist with them because they realize that they're helping to lift them out of poverty. Gorilla tours are good for the gorillas and the humans that live near them, but not if the gorillas are getting sick from the human visitors. Dr. Gladys realized that she needed to help people understand the importance of keeping humans and gorillas safe from diseases. You're not allowed to visit the gorillas if you're showing signs of sickness. Uh, people have to be healthy before they see gorillas. And people, if you have a cough or cold or flu, you're not allowed to visit the gorillas. Thanks to Dr. Gladys, people near the gorillas are determined to keep the gorillas healthy, and it shows. The number of gorillas living in Bwindi National Park keeps going up. When Dr. Gladys first started working at Bwindi in 1994, there were only about 650 mountain gorillas. In 2018, there were 1,063 gorillas, with even more today because they keep having babies. The gorilla population of Bwindi has almost doubled, which is absolutely amazing. Dr. Gladys is able to help lots of animals and humans in Uganda, and doing so makes her feel a deep sense of purpose and happiness. I feel like it's a calling from God to continue to, you know, make the world a better place in the role that he's given me, you know, looking after the wildlife and making sure that people are coexisting with the wildlife. And so it's, it's almost like finding your purpose in life and following it. Being a wildlife veterinarian is a big job, but Dr. Gladys does the hard work needed to care for animals and humans, making sure that all living things in Uganda can be happy and healthy. Elephants, gorillas, and humans too need a doctor to care about the things we do. With their help, we grow healthy and strong in the ecosystems where we all belong. A quick word for you parents. This is Marcus Smith. I'm host of the Constant Wonder podcast, which is where material for Constant Wonder Kids comes from. We made this episode because Constant Wonder contains a lot of great stuff kids will love too but you may be wanting more. We've got a whole episode devoted to Dr. Gladys Kalemazikusoka and her work as a wildlife veterinarian in Uganda. If you want to hear the full presentation, go find Constant Wonder wherever you get your podcasts. It's called In Uganda, Healthy Communities Make for Healthy Wildlife, Season 4, Episode 6. We actually think you'll love more than just one episode of our podcast. It's an ongoing quest to find awe and wonder in all creation, human or wild, vast or small, the kind of encounters that move us beyond words. Remember when you had time for wonder? Well, we suspect you still do. Subscribe to Constant Wonder on your favorite platform. Constant Wonder Kids was produced by Paige Crumperman Darrington with sound design by Mitchell Towsley. Constant Wonder Kids is a production of BYU Radio.